Hello guys, I don't know about you, but... Hey, wait a second. I actually do kind of know about you. Unless you got the link from me directly, you're probably watching a video about whatever's on the trending page right now, and saw this video while scrolling and thought to yourself, I hate meta references. Just because it's meta doesn't mean it's not clickbait, you dumb dumb. And if you somehow click this video while blindfolded, the title of this video is something along the lines of how this video was recommended to you. And the short answer is MMOE, or Multi-Gate Mixture of Experts. But unless you are one of the people who wrote the paper itself, you probably have no idea what I just said. If that's the case, stay tuned. But before we get into what MMOE is, let's talk about a simple situation. Let's say you have a model that tells you what animal you're looking at. And let's say you take the model to a park and give it a pat on the back or something, and you show it a pig or a duck or any animal that a two-year-old would imitate in public. It works perfectly, aside from the occasional misread. Then, you yeet it into a Nintendo Switch and show it a Charizard. If the model hadn't been incinerated already, you know, by the literal fire-breathing creature, it wouldn't have been able to answer your question. The problem is, your question is a reasonable request. A six-year-old making oink sounds in your annoying colleague's office would probably be able to recognize the names of a few Pokemon. However, your model is specifically designed to name animal species, and despite what I thought when I was a little kid, Pokemon aren't really animals. This is where multitask learning comes into play. This is a method that trains one neural network to do multiple tasks, and I think that's very self-explanatory as a name. For example, a handwriting detector, which is a more reasonable solution than the aforementioned one, could have a multitask model that both predicts the language of the handwriting as well as the age of the person writing it. This solves the problem mentioned in our example because it uses the commonalities between the two tasks to improve the performance of each one. Because of this, this method has been used everywhere. Some examples of its use include a content recommendation system that predicts what video the user would want to watch as well as if the user would like the video shown. <coughs> this is literally what YouTube's algorithm is doing. Or a translation model that uses the shared commonalities between languages to better improve its performance. However, multitask learning isn't so perfect. If the tasks the model has to do are too different from each other, or share both commonalities and striking differences, the prediction quality for both tasks would get worse. And so that explains why my robot that cleans floors and feeds food took my grilled cheese sandwich and rubbed it across the rug before throwing it on my face. Some other issues with multitask learning include finding the right parameters to balance the many tasks that the model has to learn together. These parameters include things like the learning rate, batch size, optimizer, and more. The previous solutions for these kinds of problems were just like to not use multitask learning methods. That's just the saddest solution to a problem I've ever heard. I mean, when done right, they improve performance greatly and can also save on things like storage space and can be more convenient. Well, recently, a new solution to this problem has come out, and it's called MMOE. As you may or may not remember, this stands for Multi-Gate Mixture of Experts. This is inspired by something called an MOE, which stands for Mixture of Experts, which is also good for multitask learning, though it can be used for a wide variety of other things. Instead of solely relying on the shared commonalities, these approaches work by using these expert networks, which I will talk about in more detail. And so with that ado, let's go into more detail about how MMOE works and its comparisons to MOE and other simple multitask networks. Shared bottom multitask networks, which is the previous method which I mentioned with its pros and cons, are pretty intuitive. We pass our input to a shared bottom layer, which hopefully learns the commonalities between different tasks. In practice though, it doesn't always work out because of differences in tasks being too much. Then, we pass the shared bottom to each of our subtask networks, which are much smaller and depend on the knowledge of the shared bottom. MOE is an improvement of this. We pass our input in and give it directly to a bunch of expert models. Notice that there is no shared bottom layer, or if there is, it isn't as big as the multitask networks. We also pass our input to a gate network, which tries to figure out which expert should do which task. Sometimes, people include a router network, which figures out what parts of the input go to each expert, and this is often used as the gate network, though I won't mention that here. Anyways, 
The expert layer's outputs are weighted summed by the gate network and are passed to each of our subtask networks. This is better because there's no shared bottom to be confused with. Instead, we have expert models that are particularly attuned to specific tasks, though we don't really know what they are, and a gate network that does that job for us. It determines which expert should do which task. Here's a really good example of an MOE in action. Suppose you wanted a team of experts to figure out a strategy to land a rocket on the moon as well as create the rocket itself. The expert networks would be a physicist, an aeronautical engineer, and a flat earth conspiracy theorist. In our case, we know that the theoretical physicist is good at understanding the logistics behind a landing and rocket, an aeronautical engineer would be really good at making the rockets and also pretty good at the physics part, and a flat earther would be good at, I mean, crying. <laughs> However, in real life, we wouldn't know which expert model does what. Anyway, in our case, a supervising manager would be our gate network, and he decides which people work on which task as well as the corresponding effort levels needed for them. So our physicist would be designated to draw the plans and calculate necessary parameters. With a little help from the engineer, the engineer would be needed to create the rocket, with some input from the physicist, and the conspiracy theorist would be escorted out of the building. Now, on to the final one. If you're thinking of the YouTube algorithm and you see a big scary monster sucking the lives of people, you're kind of wrong. Instead, you would see a diagram of MMOE. But don't underestimate it. MMOE is the ultimate big brain upgrade. It's the same as MOE, except we have an individual gate for each subtask network. The values are summed and weighted based on each corresponding gate network and given to each subtask network. Okay, by the way, here's a little quick tip. I highly suggest pausing the video and rewinding back to the MOE and MMOE diagrams and just pausing it and just trying to get a feel for how they work, I guess. Moving on, I personally think this is better than the previous approach because now you have gate networks that are attuned to each task. And using MMOE in our MOE example, the main difference would be that instead of having one supervising manager for both tasks, we would have a manager for each task. So instead of this one guy choosing who does all the tasks, we have a designer manager figure out who should design and a rocket building manager to figure out who is needed to build the rocket. The reasoning is that each specific manager would have better judgment for their own task. Either way, the five-year-old flat earther goes back to kindergarten. And so now you might be saying, well, yeah, that explanation is great and all, my dude, but I have no idea if this works. Well, to answer it, short answer, it does. The team behind this project evaluated their model in three different ways. First, the model, model was evaluated on a UCI census income dataset, which is a multitask problem, and compared it with other state-of-the-art solutions. They were able to find a considerable improvement in their approach. As you can see, in most cases, MMOE has the highest area under the curve value, which is a statistic. It's the true positive rate divided by the false positive rate. The closer this value is to one, the better. They also worked, made their own synthetic data as a kind of wear and tear test to see how well MMOE worked with increasingly different kinds of tasks. They did this by making data sets with different correlations, which are how related the two tasks are, and trained multitask MOE and MMOE models on all of them. As you can see, the loss for MMOE, which is how bad it is, is much smaller than the other two approaches, meaning that it is better in this case, and probably in general, at these kinds of tasks. I would seriously recommend checking out the paper to learn about how the synthetic data was formed as well as how the loss was measured. It is good to learn about MMOE more in depth. I'll put a link in description. Now the third example is probably the one you've been waiting for in the video. Why this video was recommended to you. In this experiment, these researchers worked with Google to make a content recommendation system which was generated from millions of unique content made by billions of users. Now, in the paper I couldn't explicitly find a single mention that it was YouTube, though it's pretty obvious. Later in my search, I did find another source, which I'll hopefully link, that confirmed it. Their model was supposed to predict engagement-related metrics like click-through and comment rate, as well as satisfaction-related qualities, like how often a person would like or subscribe to a given video. 
in the end, the model worked much better than a shared bottom one, which was already being used in production. As you can see, the AUC, which is the area under the curve, and R squared, which is the correlation, which represents how well the model, well, correlates with actual activity, have improved. And if you're unfazed by the improvements in R2 and are thinking, hey, it's only 0.09, but that's nowhere near close to 1, I say you shouldn't be, because something as chaotic as the preferences of millions of people would definitely be a hard thing to generalize. And if you were being a good paper sleuth, which does sound like the name of a detective working at a paper mill, but is actually someone who looked at the paper, you would have noticed that MMOE is about two years old. However, there have been a lot of new and modern modifications to the algorithm, which share the same key structure mentioned in this video, but have some differences. For example, a new model made around a month ago called Task MOE, notice that it uses MOE but not MMOE, to solve a small issue that MOE and subsequently MMOE had. Sorry for the confusion. The issue was that passing the input to all the experts was com computationally expensive, especially during inference time. And these experts needed many hardware accelerators to properly function when at a large amount. For example, this huge 1.2 trillion parameter network, yes, you heard me correctly, 1.2 trillion, called GLAM, required around 256 TPUs to function correctly during inference. That's a lot. Previous solutions included methods to compress the model, but really they weren't enough. However, this new solution solves this problem by first training a huge multitask model, then extracting a few of these experts which they use individually for inference. MOE networks have also been used in vision tasks as well. A new paper, which also came a month ago coincidentally, created a network that they called VMOE. They were able to get this model to a comparable level to other state-of-the-art networks while using about 50% less resources. This was partly done due to an innovation they had done with their routing network. If you remember what we talked about a few minutes ago when I was mentioning how each of the networks work, I think I mentioned about something called a router network which, which splits the input data among each of the experts. While I believe it's totally optional, I think that many large-scale networks do use it, and it's probably recommended when you want to make a large-scale network. Anyway, this router network usually takes the whole image and splits it into chunks to give to each expert, which can be computationally expensive. And as you can see, that's a little bit of a theme with some of these very large-scale models. Passing in input data to all the experts can be expensive. And so what the people who made VMOE did is only get the parts of input image work the model thought were important by also creating a priority network. And so I really suggest viewing these papers for more information. In conclusion, MMOE is a state-of-the-art multitask model that helps resolve a lot of the problems that the previous approach had. Instead of a shared bottom, it relies on several expert networks that are each experts of one or more tasks, but usually not all of them. Then, we rely on a gate network to figure out which network is good at which task and sum them up. This process is being used everywhere, including the YouTube algorithm. In addition, recent innovations have tweaked and improved its performance as well as its sister network, MOE, and is being used in many other areas of research.